Hi, welcome to this next reflection for Southern, from Southern Counties Baptist Association. We hope you had a really good Easter and thank you for watching. I've brought you here to this woodland which is not far from my home. It's called Upper Barn Copse and it's fairly well known because of the bluebells that appear this time of year. So if you see behind me, this, this green behind me will be a carpet of blue in a few weeks time. And I love coming here because it reminds me that the winter is behind us, that spring has come and that the summer is ahead of us. During this period of Covid it feels a bit like there's been a long winter but we are looking forward to the summer when gradually restrictions are being eased and we can get back to some form of normality. So I wanted to come and share with you here and particularly to go back to a, a, a book that I've been returning to quite often in, in, during this period of Covid. And it's the, it's the letter that Paul writes to the Philippians. But I particularly today want to focus on chapter 3. And uh, the verses that I want to focus on particularly are verse 10 and 11. When Paul writes these words, I want to know Christ, yes to know the power of the resurrection, and participation in his sufferings, to become like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. What I find fascinating about this passage is the way that Paul uses an old Jewish style of writing uh, that you often find in the Psalms, the chiastic pattern. And so what he says is, he talks about the power of the resurrection and then the participation in Christ's sufferings. He then says, becoming like him in death and then goes back to the resurrection by saying, attaining to the resurrection of the dead. He holds the, the suffering and death of Jesus Christ and he wraps it up in the resurrection of Christ and the power that can be seen within that. I don't know if you've ever considered the ampersand sign for and. In fact, it has a very specific grammatical purpose. And its purpose is to hold two things together that shouldn't be separated. So, for example, if you, the next time you read a menu and it says a steak and kidney pie, if it says the word and rather than the symbol, the ampersand symbol, what it's actually saying is that you're going to get a piece of steak and then next to it a kidney pie but actually if you use the ampersand the whole sentence changes and what it will be saying is that you'll get a steak and kidney pie i.e there's steak and kidney within the pie and paul's doing a similar thing as he writes and uses the chiastic nature or the chiastic pattern of this passage to hold the power of the resurrection and the participation in Christ's sufferings together so that they cannot be separated. We will never know the power of the resurrection until we step in to the participation of Christ's suffering. And when we step into the participation of Christ's suffering, we can do so with confidence knowing that the power of the resurrection is also as because of what Christ has done. The word power conjures up all kinds of thoughts and feelings, emotions even. And when we think of human power, human strength, we, we often think of power being wrapped up with those that have rather than those that haven't. We might think of people that have money, have, have political influence, ha have status perhaps, um, or, or even just physical strength. Physical strength can be a form of power. But the power that Paul is talking about is completely different. The power of the resurrection is, is none of those things. When we think of Jesus' own power, I mean, he had no money. He had no political influence. He, he had no position or, or status. He, he was a, a self-selected rabbi. 
Um, he wasn't even appointed by another rabbi, so it gave him no status particularly. Um, he, he was fairly weak character and, and, and actually at the end he had no physical strength as they placed him upon the cross. So it does beg the question of what is this power of the resurrection? This is a power unlike anything that we see or discover. It's a power beyond us. It's not something we can manufacture, it's not something we can make up, it's not something that we, we can do ourselves, it's not within our own strengths, it's only in the strength of God. And what I find fascinating is that this power of the resurrection, and I've been learning this time and time again through this COVID period, is that it requires patience. You can't conjure it up with a fancy prayer. But what you can do is you wait on God to do only what God can do. It's a power that is a gift to us. But Paul doesn't just talk about the power of the resurrection. He also talks about the importance of our participation in his sufferings. None of us, none of us would choose to, to suffer, certainly not in the way that Christ suffered and died on our behalf. And yet it is in that moment of weakness, is when we find ourselves in that place of challenge and deep difficulty, that we discover that God can do his greatest and most important work. We are not called to strength, but to weakness. We are not called to reign, but to serve. We're not called to be in control, but to be humble. We're not called to succeed, but to be faithful. We're not called to live, but to lay down our lives. And we are not called to win, but to follow. The church is at its strongest when it's at its weak weakest. It's at that point that God can do some of the most remarkable and miraculous things that we could ever imagine and has done in the past and will continue to do in the future. For many of us, COVID has left scars and they're scars that we would not have chosen, but they are scars. But in those scars, I believe God has been molding us, transforming us, changing us, and strengthening us, equipping us, getting us ready for whatever is before. And so I've come to that conclusion that I want to thank God for this season, however tough and however difficult it is. But as I thank God for the season, I say, Lord, as I come through this, may your resurrection power be seen in me. So as Paul comes to the end of this chapter in chapter 3, he moves on from talking about the power of the resurrection and participating in Christ's sufferings. And he goes on to encourage them to press on. And when he talks about pressing on, he's not talking about just, uh, well, we've got nothing better to do, or where else would we go? And we kind of just shrug our shoulders and keep going. What he means is that we press on because of the power of the resurrection, because of our participation in Christ's sufferings, and because we, we know that that power will, will raise us, will lift us into that new place in God, that we might press on with confidence in our feet, stepping forward, whatever is before us. And as we come out of this, this winter of COVID, we don't know what is ahead but we might step forward into the future with confidence in Christ Jesus. That we step into the future with hope, with a certainty that God is with us and God will work through us. And that the grace and goodness and peace and love of Christ might be seen in his church. But we might also step on, press on with joy on our faces rejoicing in all that God has done. We have known suffering, we have known scars, but we have also known 
the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our lives. And so Paul says we can press on with confidence, with hope and with rejoicing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. God bless you.